hello and welcome to Hi. another nerd rant this time about a topic that we uh, teasered quite a while ago and quite often yeah, it's a little uh, different because it has really not really much to do with computer graphics or no. uh, houdini um, but uh, as i told you we recently moved house and while we were doing so i found a lot of paintings by my father who used to be a fine arts painter so um, unfortunately he died three years ago but um, he spent his entire life painting that was his passion and that is what he did and i uh, discovered a lot of his uh, oil paintings from the 80s and even the 70s and uh, we um, scanned them last week yeah because uh, i mean some of the uh, paintings that you see in the background and let me just switch to that camera here some of the paintings you see in the background like that one here or the one with the burning house up there um or even that one down there yeah. um are works by your father um and i was and you actually gifted me with one of his works uh, yes. for a birthday, um, which I was very happy about. And um, yeah, we just, I mean, I appreciate his work very much. And so we thought, yeah, why not take pictures of uh, a collection or a selection of works that we found and uh, show them and discuss them? Yes. But uh, first, I think we also uh, by accident happened to stumble uh, upon a photo of your father. That is true. And here he is. That is my father. <laughs> As gray as I am now, I think he was in his <laughs> 60s when this picture was taken. That was my father. Um, yeah. And your dad was Spanish, right? He was from Madrid in Spain. And he started his career as a teacher, actually. Mm -hmm. And then um, switched to... No, first he went to art school and uh, studied something similar to interior design, I think, in, okay. the, in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And he created some pretty nice renderings back then by hand. Unfortunately, I don't have them. I ah. don't know where they actually are. Somewhere, maybe in the basement of my mother, or I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I remember them to be uh, very interesting, just perspectives of interiors of, I don't know, pharmacies or shops or <laughs> stuff. Rendered, uh, yeah, arcviz um, with the means of the 50s. Yeah. So markers and uh, oil and uh, gouache and, oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, watercolor. But uh, other than that, pretty much exactly what you do today with 3D, photorealistic rendering of interiors. That is how he started. And then he went to Germany and uh, pursued his career as a fine arts painter. And to be honest, he was never very successful because he was a, at least in my opinion, good painter, mm -hmm. but a very, very bad businessman. Mm -hmm. So organizing exhibitions and uh, the whole art business was not uh, his... Uh, Particular strength, maybe. Yeah. His piece of cake. So um, basically he sat in his little um, room, in his little studio and painted. And he was supported by my mother. Uh -huh. and my mother just earned the income for the family. Um, what uh, gave him the opportunity to just uh, fill his days painting. And it was really interesting how much work he created. And uh, later on, he switched from oil painting to um, watercolor. Uh -huh. And um, why is that? Uh, I think because uh, of uh, health issues. Because painting with oil is uh, not the healthiest thing in the world because yeah. of the gases and yeah, uh, the, fumes, the chemicals yeah. and stuff. And uh, the space was not very large. Okay. And I think that was one of the reasons because he. Uh, had uh, issues he had a condition with his eyes and that got worse by um smelling these fumes and i think uh, that was one of the reasons and the other reason was that my mother um urged him to switch because she liked uh, watercolor more i think okay so um yeah from the 90s on he started to switch to watercolor and he started to uh, his to switch his subjects to just landscapes and pretty pretty landscapes from around Europe, mm -hmm. I'd say. And while these pictures are nice and um, actually were sold, I like the old abstracted oil paintings more. That yeah. is why we focused on these. Yeah. And this is just like a small section of works, um, I think, because um, yes. in, in some basements there is a plethora of other works hiding. So I'll just, I'll just switch um, 
to the screen here. And yeah, that's the selection. That is the stuff that we scanned that are some of the works all from the 80s and 90s. So some date back to 76 when I was two years old. <laughs> um, so obviously my father did not bother about caring uh, about the baby. Instead, he just painted and uh, the, the the oldest ones or the the, uh, the earliest works were these <laughs> and um, I, I i particularly like them because you clearly see the influences of the 70s pop culture in there yeah the, the, the shoes look so much like yellow submarine in a way. exactly not only the shoes there's a, just the shapes of yeah. the overall uh, formal treatment of the shapes and yeah. everything interesting nonetheless there is a second one in the series this one here featuring some human face over there and i think it's quite interesting because uh, it leads to the to, to the later works um and these are then uh maybe inspired i don't know hr Ge uh, geiger is later i think but these industrial structures that you see there um remind me a little bit of of the work of G giger giga yeah mm -hmm. i don't know it was very funny because I remember when I was a child, my father often uh, took walks with the family with us, and he picked up trash from the from the pathway. Everything that he found, little plastic caps or I don't know, to use them as stamps for these pictures. And what you see there is actually the trash from the road that he used to do these textures. Ah, those are stamps. Okay, I didn't realize that. And That's highly um, interesting. That is really interesting because he obviously was addicted to texture. Mm -hmm. So he was very much into creating texture. And that is something he passed on to me. <laughs> so uh, it's it's no wonder that I am uh, doing Houdini nowadays um, and I am focusing on these intricate details of the geometry and of the texture too. So it's more about uh, texture and surface and less about the actual thing depicted. Okay, interesting. And Very this interesting. is a series too. <coughs> Sorry. This is a series too, I think. So there is a second one there. Um, featuring the, the different stamps, different structures. Again, very industrial-looking machinery type of thing. And then there's a third one, this one, featuring a little guy looking out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird and interesting. Uh, yeah, it's. I think it's pretty interesting, at least to me. I don't know if I'm biased because it is my father <laughs> painting these pictures. Might be. Um, I don't know. I really like them and I'm planning on uh, getting them framed and hanging them somewhere here around the house. Then we have that another one, uh, which is really a little psychedelic. Um, this one here featuring a plane. I don't know. Um, to me, it looks a little like an illustration of one of Stanislav Lem's books in the 70s or something. Yeah, maybe. It looks like a movie poster. It could be a, a Polish movie poster for a sci-fi or for thriller, maybe. Yeah, maybe something like this. That's what I see in that 76 one. 76 is what the signature says. Yeah that, yeah, that checks out, I think. And this continues. So there is abstract studies like this one here. This one I adore. I love it. This yeah. is this is one of my favorites here. I really love what he does there. Yeah, uh, it's standing over there, and um, then uh, even back then he uh, used watercolor too to create similar artwork, similar mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. The pigeon here that you see here um, is something that uh, reoccurs again and again in his works okay. and he's featuring a lot of um, uh, portraits but always silhouette from the side like this one for example it's very typical for my father but that's and amazing as this well. one too yeah uh, as you can see yeah uh, usually a portrait and then heavy use of texture and always this stamping technique mm -hmm. uh, using oil on canvas this is from 78 mm -hmm. and there is more this one featuring an eye. <laughs> that weirdly looks like a uh, uh, mural or like one of those uh, colored windows in Protestant stained glass churches. To windows, me. Yeah, stained glass exactly. windows in a Protestant church. That's Chances what this are involves. that this is actually uh, inspired by church windows. I don't know. We have a Gothic cathedral in Nuremberg where, we, where I was born and where my father was living mm -hmm. um, that features uh, beautiful stained glass windows. Maybe this is even a, an inspiration. And then still you have these 70s art style inspired bubbles. And um, to me, this looks a little bit like, a, I don't know, a, a, a 
aorta. Oh, yeah, yeah, I could see that. Lungs, or yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Uh, and then later, so he created a lot of these, always the same style. I really, to me, it was uh, quite interesting to see when we scanned them all, how similar they are, and that uh, actually a style is very much recognizable. Like, look at this one. Um, uh, here the reproduction is not very good. All this brown stuff uh, in the top left corner is meant to be gold. Oh yeah, that's because of uh, I photographed this with a polarized filter. Exactly, that is why the gold finish is gone. And these guys here, for example, again silhouette mm -hmm. from the side. Um, I don't know. The inside of robots. Yeah, maybe. I'd say this could even serve as a picture illustrating some AI concepts. Yep. <laughs> yep. Maybe like the relationship between yep. humans and machines or yep. something like could this. Could very well be that, yeah. Yeah. And the funny thing is, I, w I always got very inspired by these textures that he was creating, these unique textures. And when I started art school in 1994, <laughs> I felt inspired by this. And um, where, uh, while I was doing my first steps in 3D, I scanned these images and used the textures actually to create um, this for, for my uh, art curriculum, um, where I created a 3D body a 3d torso and use these textures to create this um, yeah of course you have your 3d nude there what do you do as an art student in the 90s, 90s exactly zeros when did you study 94 94 yeah. 94 that is what i created from his pictures <laughs> very funny funny enough and then later he starts to um get a little bit more Natural. But wait, 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 wait. Let's talk about uh, maybe that one up there first, because I think th for, to me that's a bit of tra that's a bit transitional. I'm not sure if I'm correct. But no, it is. That's the one that is hanging here, yeah. um, and uh, that still is oil painting. And to me, it looks a lot of like concept art. Um, it has yeah. the same loose brush style, yeah. uh, painterly strokes. Yeah. Uh, not not really something there it's just uh yeah, when, you, when, when you look at it up close but like the distance we're sitting now here when i look at this image behind you now it absolutely looks like this burning wooden structure absolutely he captured the essence so in in a, in, a, in, in, in some regard it, it really is uh, very similar to current concept art um still this uh haptic structure of oil on canvas is something very very pretty yeah i really and like it's that really digital. hard to mimic something like this with digital painting although yeah. everybody tries all the time and we even have a tutorial for this still <laughs> um it is it is fantastic to have a, a yeah something to touch yeah on the wall absolutely i really like that and i would love to get into oil painting it's just um it's time consuming. It's time consuming. Uh, it's very material intensive. You have to have space for this. And um, I don't think it will happen. Maybe when I'm retired. And then there is more landscapes that he painted. This one, we did not scan. Did we scan the tree over there? Because this tree is very funny because I, yeah, it sort one. of reminds me of illustrations regarding some fantasy topics. Yeah, but I mean, in this one, I, I'm not sure if I'm over-interpreting here, but this to me is absolutely transitional because within the tree stump, you can see still those kind of stamp techniques, those abstract shapes in which he forms the, um, which he forms the tree here, like in these areas yes, here. Yes, absolutely. And there are more like this. There are more like this that are sort of tra uh, transitional, like that one, for example. Mm -hmm. Still uh, has all these abstract shapes and textures and stuff, but at the same time tries to um, show a landscape. Again, some burning houses, I don't know. And the one next to it is quite weird. <laughs> this is really weird. I, I really don't understand at all why in 82 he decided to paint, paint Santa Claus. Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe he was inspired by uh, icons from yeah, Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks a little bit like that. It's weird. You're, you're right. Um, yes. And then uh, we, uh, yeah, then he starts to go into landscape. But before I show you some of these images, let me quickly show you this one because I think this one is interesting because it is a pencil. It's a pencil drawing. And uh, still, the obsession with these shapes and these intricate details filling the, the um, planes of the image is, is still there, although he did all of this using pencil. I like this one. It's a large, it's yeah. a large one. I really love it as well. It, and it benefits from being large and being in a format that, um, at least in the stack that we um, scanned, 
isn't uh, seen. This is, I think, the largest artwork that we had, right? Yeah. Let me let me go in, and you see all this uh, brushwork there. <laughs> <laughs> Took him weeks, I think. It's amazing. To this. And then you have this transition, here's another transitional one, uh, mm -hmm. from all this abstracted, uh, figurative stuff. But I mean, that, that one is weird because that one says uh, 78 on it and the other one were all the 80s. Yeah, I mean, he, he created always, uh, I, I think, five or ten images uh, in parallel okay. at the same time. Okay. So he worked one day on this one uh -huh. and then he felt like working on the other one. And the transition is um, going on slowly and in parallel. Okay. So this is one of the early landscapes, very abstracted still. And then uh, he starts to get more and more concrete, concrete yeah. uh, figurative, like this, I don't know, cathedral, still showing these textures. And uh, that one is even more concrete. Like, I mean, that's Nuremberg, right? No. No? No. That is just some imaginative okay. city featuring some, I don't know. It's not my hometown. Okay. Later on, he painted a lot of... Uh, vistas from Nuremberg but uh, in here we don't have any and then we have just these texture pieces that really don't show anything but texture but nevertheless quite nice interesting I mean we might want to do a tutorial on how to uh, achieve textures like this <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta think about that maybe that's interesting too with yeah, the beard. Again, yeah again this profile yeah and then some of these images are really just weird, like yeah. this one here. It's more that like, uh, I don't know, an illustration for a 70s uh, fashion magazine. Or, yeah, or a, um, like a concert poster or something like that. Psychedelic disc cover, yeah. or I don't know. It's a weird one. That's but uh, very but again, 78 as well. 78 was a very diverse year for your dad. A then. very productive year. But that's probably due to the fact that we just found this one folder of oh, images yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. that is from this era. Okay. Um, there is more. So I'm, I'm, uh, I know that we have at least as many works from the years later. It's just that we don't scan. We did not scan them. And, and by the way, if, if uh, we should do a second part on that and you want us to go through the if whole you're archive, interested. <laughs> leave a comment. Tell us. We are unsure if you are interested at yeah. all. It's just that we <laughs> found this to be interesting, so we are showing it to you. Um, and then uh, the figures, uh, the portraits, uh, that's later. Um, that's again, that's watercolor now. And um, this shape here is due to scanning. It's yeah, an artifact. Yeah, it has to go. Flash. Um, but then he starts to paint portraits, and some of them are really interesting at least to me, now I lost my cursor. Where is my cursor? Here's my cursor. Like this one, for example. Um, that's later, that's 88. Um, mm -hmm. So still oil painting, um, but a lot more concrete. Mm -hmm. And this topic with the bride is obviously something that he covered a lot. Mm -hmm. And here you see these structures. And I remember these structures are from a little embroidery blankets that oh, they, they found are, around are the actual, house and okay. he just <laughs> glued them to the picture and then painted over them to oh. get these pictures. <laughs> it looks it looks like lace, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that is what, what he loved to do. Play with stuff and oil color and uh, um, yeah, do mashups. Yeah, and then uh, a lot of uh, sketches like this one. <laughs> If he would have continued this piece, it would uh, would have ended up um, like the other one, I think. But I mean, that one is also really interesting because of it's just a fragment. I mean, yeah. not to diminish your father's uh, father's artwork, but um, I could see that as a tattoo. Yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> Very good idea. <laughs> so you should get that. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I decided not to get tattooed at all. And that is because a little, I can tell you a little story, because uh, I love tattoos. I love the look of them, and I love if people have tattoos. It's yeah. just I don't want to get any, because I was very, very close. When I started my studies in 94, I was the biggest Apple fanboy in the world. And I was very, very close to get the Apple logo tattooed, and that would be cringe. It yeah. would be the worst case. Just yeah. imagine. Yeah, imagine being corporate, uh, corporate yeah. branding. Jesus on, on Christ. Wearing that what on a, your skin. What a ridiculous idea. And um, that is wh when, I, when I somehow managed to not get a tattoo, <laughs> that I decided to not get a tattoo at all because ideas are very short lived <laughs> even today but i mean but, but i mean a this sketch isn't corporate 
Um, yeah, that that at least would would be something that really has uh, and it's something to do with my with my life yeah. and with my it's family heritage, in a way. That's true. Which one can I show? This one is sort of weird too. <laughs> the flat headed boy. Yeah, that is weird. Really weird, weird stuff. So, but in a way, I'm very thankful for this oeuvre because it somehow um, it's a very nice uh, memory um, for my father. Yeah, absolutely. Better than images, better than just snapshots. It's just uh, it's really he he's living on in these images. I, th I think it reveals so. more personality than a photo. Uh, yeah, that's true. So yeah. This is uh, what we scanned uh, regarding the artworks of my father. And uh, yeah, maybe it is interesting because, of course, uh, I see now that it influenced me a lot. Because you have to imagine when I was a very little boy, three or four years old, yeah. these were everywhere. That mm -hmm. was my little world. Because mm -hmm. if you are a small child, your mm -hmm. home is your world. Absolutely. That is what you what yeah. you see and as you, the world. And you regard it as totally normal and exactly. assume that everyone else lives like this. Yeah, that's the norm. That's the standard. And this was everywhere. So these images were covering all our walls. Mm -hmm. And that is a... That is a um, visual landscape that I grew up with. <laughs> so if I'm, if you are wondering why I am doing what I am doing, it's probably due to this. But I mean, brilliant. I mean, a lovely. Um, I find I find it so interesting um, because of the uh, breadth uh, of his world, just the the amount, the spectrum of his work. Um, I mean, I, I I have some favorites. Definitely, I have some favorite styles here. Um, but nevertheless, um, I think disregarding some of the motives, I think um, he was very talented in all the media he touched. Um, be it I like them too. I like them too. Uh, he was never really successful. And I'm not sure if the art is just not that great or if it's just his uh, lack of skill regarding and PR and marketing. marketing his art. Um, I don't know. We will never find out. <laughs> Let us know um, what you think. If you're, yeah, let, let us know what you think. Let us know what your speculation is why Manu's dad never made it big. Um, let us know what you think about the art, the style, the craftsmanship behind it. And let us know if we should do another deep dive and uh, unbox another pile of Another drawings. crate. Yeah. Exactly. Would be really interesting to me, as this is, of course, very personal. So let me know what you think. And I think, yeah. With that's that, it. That's, that's it. That's it for today. And um, as always, until next time, it is cheers and goodbye. Goodbye.